Hello students, welcome to the course on Hydrology EVE 301 offered to civil engineering students at College of Science and Technology. I am Kirtan Adhikari, faculty at CST. See you in the course. In the last lecture, I demonstrated the procedure to take readings of various meteorological parameters from an observatory. In this lecture, we will discuss some numerical formula to compute lake evaporation or the evaporation from water bodies such as hydropower reservoirs. These numerical formulas, the Mayer formula and the Rhodes formula, are based on Dalton's law of evaporation, which states that evaporation is directly proportional to the difference in saturation vapor pressure and the actual vapor pressure of the air. In addition to the Dalton's principle, a factor that depends upon the velocity of air over the lake surface is also considered. As you notice, the Mayer's formula, a Km is the coefficient. The next term, the next term is the factor that considers the wind velocity and the last term is the difference between saturated vapor pressure and the actual vapor pressure. Whereas, the Rohr's formula also considers the pressure term. Notice that the velocity is in kilometer per hour at 0 0.6 meter above the lake surface or the ground surface. Whereas, in Mayer's formula, it is at a height of 9 meter from the ground surface or the lake surface. To convert or extrapolate velocity to a different height, power law is used, which states that the velocity at any height is equal to coefficient time height raised to power 1 by 7. For instance, if you know a velocity at a height a, so let's say the velocity at height a equal to ua which is equal to coefficient time height h a raised to power 1 by 7. Let it be equation number 1. And we are interested to find the velocity at height b. So velocity of height b will also be equal to a coefficient times height b raised to power 1 by 7. Let it be equation number 2. If you divide equation number 2 by equation number 1 then express the everything, the remaining terms, the coefficient will get cancelled and remaining terms, in terms of high uh, velocity at B, we are going to get the velocity at a height B, which is equal to velocity at height A times velocity at height, uh, height B divided by height A raised to power 1 by 7. So, this equation is used to extrapolate the velocity. Okay. Let's solve a numerical problem. A reservoir with an average surface spread of 3.3 km square in December has water surface temperature at 22.5 degrees centigrade and relative humidity of 35%. Wind velocity measured at 2 meter above the ground surface at a nearby observatory is 15 km per hour. Calculate average evaporation loss from the reservoir in mm per day and total depth of volume of evaporation for December in hectare meter. To solve this problem, let's try to uh, make all the list down all the information that is given and also try to make the unit consistent. So area is given as kilometer square, so that is 3.3 into 10 to the thousand raised to power 2. That is that much would be meter square. Likewise, temperature is given 22.5 degrees centigrade. Your relative humidity is given 35 percentage, and the velocity at 2 meter V or U2 means the velocity at height of 2 meter is given as 15 km per hour. Likewise, we can calculate the saturation vapor pressure. The equation to calculate saturation vapor pressure is given by this whereby you had just have to substitute the value of temperature in degree centigrade and we get 2726.480 pascals which is Newton per meter square. But 
we don't want in Newton per meter square we want it in a millimeter of mercury to do that we simply have to use the expression that is pressure is equal to rho gh whereas pressure is already calculated rho is the density of the mercury g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the height that the mercury is going to raise when this much pressure is applied so from this equation we can calculate the height which is equal to 20.446 millimeter of mercury and the actual vapor pressure is given by relative humidity times the saturation vapor pressure so 0 0.35 times 20.446 is equal to 7.156 mm Hg. so we got two parameters to use Mears formula wind speed must be extrapolated to a height of 9 meter because we know that in Mears formula we use the velocity at 9 meter whereas in the Rohr's formula the velocity is considered at 0 0.6 meter above the ground surface and we have also discussed the formula how to extrapolate so from here we get the velocity of air at 9 meter height and which is equal to 18.595 kilometer per hour likewise we use the uh, Mayer's formula to find the evaporation which is equal to 0 0.36 at the albedo which is a coefficient which is already given for a lake surface is considered to be 0 0.36 so just we are taking this times 1 plus velocity in kilometer per hour at 9 meter from the ground divided by 16 times the difference between the saturation vapor pressure and the actual vapor pressure so this gives us 10.345 mm per day but the question says how much you know in the volume they want it so first let's this is per day so December has 31 days so when you multiply 31 with this parameter we get total volume so 320.695 mm in whole month that much mm that is in terms of depth if you multiply this with an area we are going to get in uh, meter cube so total volume would be the total area multiplied by this uh, depth so we get the total volume of water that has evaporated now the question also asks us to find it in hectare meter so in hectare meter you simply divide this whole value divided by 10 to the power 4 and we get 105.9 hectare meter so that is our answer moving on let's discuss few measures to reduce lake evaporation as we know if we cover the surface with some kind of floating objects then you know water cannot evaporate directly so here is one method that is float or by adding some chemical over the liquid surface the evaporation can be checked and there are others other techniques such as reducing the surface area creating the forest around the reservoir and there are some plants which tends to absorb more water so when we say creating forest we should avoid planting such trees which can absorb more water and uh, above, uh, uh, and the, there can be more losses in terms of evapotranspiration so that has to be considered that has to be considered moving on to the soil evaporation soil evaporation means evaporation from the barren land so as the rain stops the uh, soil evaporation continues and afterwards it will become uh, less and it, it follows a decay curve okay so the soil evaporation is usually measured in lacy meter we'll discuss more about what this lacy meter is in subsequent uh, section with this Let's move on to our next losses that is the evapotranspiration. Now evapotranspiration is also known as consumptive use as this amount is necessary to sustain plant growth. Now we know that evapotranspiration is a combination of two terms evaporation and transpiration. Now when we say evaporation it means evaporation from the soil and transpiration is the actual water that is released by the plant so in irrigation engineering this evapotranspiration plays a very important role now if in a field that has a crop is losing a certain amount of water means that much water needs to be applied to the field for a successful plant growth you know 
to at least the plant to grow that much water is required. That's why this evaporation terms plays a very important role in irrigation engineering. So let's also discuss few terms associated with this section that is evaporation as I've already explained it is the actual water that has been released by the plant and with evaporation and evapotranspiration uh, combined what is known as evapotranspiration. Now transpiration ratio, a ratio of total weight of water transpired by the plant during its growing period to the mass of dry matter produced including roots. Now what is the significance of this transpiration ratio? As you can see as an example, wheat is the transpiration ratio for wheat ranges from 300 to 600 whereas for rice it is 600 to 800 which means rice requires twice the amount of water as compared to wheat to produce same dry matter. So that's how we need to understand this and the other term being field capacity. Water holding capacity of soil against gravity beyond which water will percolate down to the ground to the ground water that is that ability of a soil to hold or retain water against the gravity is known as field capacity and it is important because if the water drains easily then the water is not available for the plant next point a next term is the wilting point moisture content of a soil at which the moisture is no longer available in sufficient quantity to sustain plants now what happens is because of molecular bond between the uh, soil particle and the water molecule there is a there is going to be a very strong attractive force between particles of soil particles and the water if the force is so large then the plant cannot absorb that water through its root. So that's why we say the moisture is no longer available in sufficient quantity. And when that condition reaches, plant has no water, it cannot absorb more water, so plant starts to wilt. The next term is the potential evapotranspiration. In a very straight term, it is the maximum evapotranspiration. So the, as a definition, it is the evaporation from a fully vegetated watershed when sufficient moisture is always available to completely meet the water requirement and it is the as I said is the maximum evapotranspiration and this is what is actually being calculated by an irrigation engineer so to supply if you need to calculate the amount of water to be supplied for a, a paddy field or a crop for a large area then how much water do you need to apply to supply is calculated from I mean this is what this is our interest we calculate potential evapotranspiration and that much water is required to grow a certain crop along with this there are other two terms which is the actual evapotranspiration and reference evapotranspiration actual evapotranspiration as the name suggests it is the actual the actual value of evapotranspiration and which is going to be slightly less than the potential evapotranspiration and there is a reference uh, evapotranspiration this reference evapotranspiration means it is an uh, easy way of standardizing I mean if you know a particular standard value then you can multiply that value with the other crop coefficient to calculate uh, potential evapotranspiration as a definition a reference surface is a hypothetic hypothetical grass reference crop with an assumed height of 0.1 meter defined fixed surface resistance of 0, uh, 70 meter per second and albedo of 0.23 the main purpose of it is for standardization the potential evapotranspiration of any crop can be calculated by multiplying the reference crop evapor uh, reference evapotranspiration with a crop coefficient like I explained so if we need to find the potential evapotranspiration for a rice crop so we simply multiply the reference crop times the crop coefficient okay the reference evapotranspiration times the crop coefficient now this crop coefficient has to be experimentally computed now new term comes that is albedo albedo means the reflective property of an object now it ranges from 0 to 1 whereas you know 0 means you can absorb all 
and one means it can reflect all so that is the um, uh, property of an object along with this we also need to discuss the uh, relationship between various uh, various terminologies we have just discussed let's understand the relationship of these terms with the help of a chart so this chart is a relationship between the ratio of actual evapotranspiration actual evapotranspiration to potential evapotranspiration in y axis and available moisture in x axis it is developed for different soil type on the basis of experimental results when the moisture is 100 percent when the moisture is 100 percent it is field capacity the moisture content at the field is the field capacity and when the moisture is not available for the plant then it reaches the permanent wilting point so there is no return if this condition is reached then the plant will not revive then it will die as you can observe that for same uh, same value of moisture available okay the ratio of the AET to PET is significantly different for clay it is more and for sandy soil it is less 